I've made these spacers out of one inch aluminum square tubing and I've just super glued a washer because I needed a little bit more clearance for this bolt over here. So these go on here like so. I've already got one attached. And I'm just using a clamp to hold the drawer glide out of the way while I attach the other two spacers. I'll put one down here and then one right below the pivot point. So I finished making this custom bracket. I made it out of one inch steel square tubing and then I welded some flat bar at a couple of different locations. The scissor mechanism will go in between these two bars and then on this bar this attaches to a four foot drawer slide and I'll show you that in a second and then I welded two small pieces of flat bar here and this is where the aluminum armature will rest on but before I attach the armature I have to cut it and then drill some holes so that I can uh, fashion some sort of mechanism where the head of the prop will tilt forward so this is how the bracket sits on that scissor mechanism and over here I have this four foot drawer slide and I have the way it's mounted the skinny portion of the drawer slide will actually mount to the bracket. Now I have two holes on this long piece right here because if I only attached one hole on each of these legs then the entire armature would want to swivel like that. So by putting two bolts here it will prevent that from happening. And then the aluminum armature will sit on top of here and I'll attach it from underneath. Now I'm just measuring a piece of one inch square aluminum stock to cut for the top of my armature. This is going to be the shoulders or the top part of the armature. But before I mount this to the mounting bracket and mount it to the scissor mechanism, I need to figure out the head movement. So Fright Prop sells these servos. They have two different kinds. This is their uh, premium heavy duty, but they dub it as their standard servo. I actually bought a kit. It's a skull head turn and tilt kit. Although, I just don't know about the strength or the amount of torque that these can handle. So I'm actually going to do a two, like a kind of a hybrid model to make the head movement work for me. I'm going to use the servo for the head to uh, turn side to side. And I'm going to use a pneumatic cylinder, a small pneumatic cylinder, for the head tilt. And then I'll just adjust the speed by using speed controllers on the valves. So. In this kit, they give you two of these servos that come in a box like this, and now they are using this brand called Hobbybots, and if you go to Hobbybots website, uh, it appears that they're exclusively sold by Fright Props. Um, and they give you these, in this kit, for this head turn and tilt kit, they give you all of this hardware. This is a spring to act as kind of a counterweight function to reduce the amount of torque on the head. And that might work. And the other issue with that, if I use two servos, the way you have to mount them is one has to be right next to it. So you'd have like a really bulky head area or neck area. And I want my neck to be um, some leftover skeleton bones that I have. It's actually a spine and I'm gonna use a bunch of segments for the neck, much like I did the, um, the cauldron creep. So all of this hardware, 
they give you with all kinds of different mounting options. The best mounting option to reduce the amount of strain on your servo is this one right here where they give you this hub because this bracket here is actually supported onto this. Nothing rests on this. It's all, it's all on the housing like that. And this hub shaft would just drop in here and it's got a nice, really nice bearing and then I can just attach anything I wanted to on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this bar stock. It's aluminum bar stock. And I'm going to cut a piece because it's actually the same width as this hub. I'll make an opposing hub and then tap a quarter inch tap in the center of it and I'll use that threaded rod will go down and that will become the armature for my neck. Then I can slide on the, the skeleton bones and then I can mount my head on top of that. And everything will rest on this hub and it will swivel just nicely on that servo. So I've got all of my pieces cut for my armature and I've got part of it assembled right here. But again, this is one inch aluminum stock. It's eighth inch thick, so it's pretty heavy duty stuff. Um, but it's still fairly lightweight uh, because it's aluminum, which is nice. I could have gone steel, um, but I like using aluminum. Uh, it's weatherproof, I don't have to paint it. I didn't know if I wanted to paint this or just leave it bare like this. I'm kind of making this up as I go along. But there's essentially five pieces to this armature. The shoulders are up here. I have all my holes drilled, you can't see it on the other side, for the servo mechanism. And then I have holes drilled at each end to attach the limbs. And basically those are attached using these stainless steel hinges. They're one inches wide. They've got a nice recess there for a bugle head machine bolt. And then I'm just attaching them using nylon locking nuts. I like the locking nuts because you don't need to use washers or any of that. And this should stay pretty secure. But if I ever if I have to adjust it or anything, this because I'm not welding the armature. This gives me the latitude to do that. I'm only going to put these top two arms on because I still have to drill some holes and most likely I want to do it on my mill just because I can, because I am doing through holes just because I don't know how much force this is going to be with wind and everything like that. I want them to be pretty sturdy. So that's why I did pull, uh, holes all the way through. I guess I could have tapped this, which I did on the top of this. I did tap some holes for the servo mount. I'm not sure if you can see that, but obviously I will film me putting that together and go over that later. But essentially, there's going to be a pneumatic cylinder here on each side for the shoulders. That's for the, the prop to go like this. And then there's going to be a pneumatic shoulder here and this is for this. So basically, when the prop is static, it will pretty much be like this. And then as it activates and rises, it'll go out like that. So what I'm using are pneumatic cylinders. These are double acting cylinders. That means there's force applied to the extension of the rod and force applied on the return. They do make a single action cylinder which is a spring return and that would be good to use if you're just doing a pop-up prop because then the weight of the prop would actually compress the spring down. The nice thing about the double acting cylinders is they're really not that much more um, and it gives you a lot more opportunity to animate a prop differently especially if you put a speed controller or a muffler on, on your uh, valve. And I'll get into that later. But essentially, these mount using these brackets. They make a couple of different kinds of these brackets. 
and this is going to mount under here and then the end of it will mount down here with this mounting bracket that goes on the end of the rod here and then when the prop is activated it'll actually open up the arm like that and I needed the double acting because a spring return wouldn't be enough uh, because of gravity obviously to uh, bring the, the armature back to its resting state so they make a couple of different types of brackets to mount your um, cylinder with let's see if I can so typically you might mount it like this for the back but I would have had to make a separate plate mount that to the plate because this is only one inches thick now I do make a single piece for the end of the cylinder to mount into these are a little pricey though um, but it works well for this application they don't make is a single bracket. Let me let me put this clevis pin or clevis mounting bracket on here. So this mounts to the rod end. You only need a single bracket, which goes in between these two legs right here, and then a pin goes in there. The problem that I have with this is that because I only have an inch. I've got to center this obviously it's going to be where the most most of the strength is I don't want I can't really offset this so it's got to be centered and you don't want to really uh, mount anything offset when when you're restricted by hinges because there's no ball joint here so really this is only one way that can go and that's exactly 90 degrees out without any sway because of that the only way I can mount that would be it would be offset here so if it was mounted right here this would actually be up there and I'm afraid that it's gonna to put too much strain on this and it's not gonna function properly and this is not a big heavy duty cylinder and I don't want it to bend so I've got to make my own brackets so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut just some one inch steel here and then I'm gonna sand off I've already done it to a couple. I'm going to sand off, this is a galvanized uh, steel bracket. I'm going to sand off just a little bit down here so that I can place it on the steel and then weld it. And then once I tack weld it on one side, I'll cut the bottom part of this off and then I'll weld the other side. But you have to clean that galvanized coating off, otherwise you won't get a good weld. Okay, so remember, these pieces are galvanized, so you have to sand off that galvanized coating in order for you to get a clean weld. Now I'm just cutting the little one inch bar brackets to size and then uh, sanding all of the rough edges. And here I'm using a uh, wire wheel on a drill to get rid of some of that mill scale and then cleaning any oil off with uh, acetone. You have to get rid of that mill scale from steel otherwise uh, you won't get a really good weld. Now I'm just tack welding these cylinder mount brackets to that uh, one inch bar stock. Once I had it tack welded, then I just cut off the tab with a cutoff wheel and then uh, popped that tab off and welded the other side. Now I'm attaching three or four of these uh, long four inch screws and they're going to act as standoff screws and they just get attached to the uh, smallest piece or section of that floor slide. These standoff screws will allow me to attach some foam or wood or whatever I decide to make the front of the body out of. Now I'm just attaching that bracket that I made. One side goes to the top of the scissor lift, the other side goes to the top of the drawer slide. Now I did have to change 
uh, where that was mounted. I had to change from mounting it on the outside of the drawer slide to the inside to push the scissor lift back just a little bit so it could clear that uh, metal post. So all four cylinders on the prop, on the upper por portion of the prop, are the same. They're all three quarter inch pneumatic cylinders. They're double acting. This is how they come from fright props. There's two ports, one for air in to extend the cylinder and then one for the other side of the valve for the air to push the cylinder back in. Now I need to attach the air fittings and they come with Teflon tape already on there but if you can see the first couple of threads has no Teflon tape so they're kind of inconsistent how they come. So to be on the safe side I always do this anyway. I'm going to use some pipe thread sealant. This is what you would use for a gas line. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out on this cardboard right here and I'll just get a little on my finger and then I'm just going to put a little on those first few threads. There's nothing worse than getting your prop all hooked up only to have an air leak so this is just kind of an insurance policy. The nice thing about these fittings is they're, they can swivel so you can adjust which way your air lines are headed. The cylinder is made out of aluminum so you definitely don't want to over tighten these but that's also why I'm using this pipe sealant, this thread sealant. As you can see there's quite a few threads visible still. So this is the valve that I'll be using to control the airflow to the cylinders and I need three of these. And this operates on 12 volts. They also have a 24 volt model. The nice thing about the 12 volt is it can run directly from your uh, Peekaboo Flex or your Peekaboo Max. So this is uh, a five port, I think, I think they call it a two way five port valve. So you have your air going in right here. These are your uh, speed controllers or mufflers, which, which I have to use these on this particular prop. Otherwise, if I didn't, when the pneumatic cylinder engaged, it would just pop out and then come back in. And obviously we want kind of a smooth motion. So I'll get this hooked up and I'll show you what I mean. So. These don't need any Teflon tape or anything, they just go right into the ports. And actually I'll wait to attach that one before so attach the airline connector. And this is a pressure regulator. I just have to assemble it, but this is how I will control how much air pressure goes into each line. So I'll have three of these. The main, uh, the main air line coming from my compressor is usually at um, like 100 psi. I'll have one regulator to stop this down to 90. I'll have another one to stop this down to 40 and another one for 30. Um, the reason I don't use the air compressor for like the larger one and just use two of the regulators is because I will have most likely other props out um, so I need um, at least a hundred psi going to everything and then that way I can just use individual regulators to control uh, the air pressure for each individual prop. 
All right, so I have all my fittings on every cylinder and I want to test each cylinder for leaks. So I have my air compressor set for 30 PSI and then I've just connected some tubing. This is quarter inch nylon tubing. It's the same stuff that you would get at like Home Depot or a home center for uh, a drip irrigation system in your garden. It's super inexpensive and it works great. The only problem with this airline is that it can kink. So this year I did buy some really flexible airline. It's uh, I believe it's a polyethylene or a polypropylene airline. Same diameter and everything, but it's much more forgiving if it if you have a big moving prop like this one. <clears throat> you don't want to risk this this stuff tends to coil. You don't want to risk it getting caught somewhere and and bending and kinking and then you have no air pressure or it would break over time. So I'm just going to connect this first cylinder. Now I have these these brass speed controllers or mufflers. Actually they do both. They muffle the sound and they control the speed. If I didn't have these on this prop, when the prop is activated it would basically just do this. So I want a nice smooth motion. So I'm going to screw these down. Now watch. And then when that's under load, it's going to be um, even slower. That's that's all the way down. So it's nice and smooth and that's kind of what I'm looking for. Yeah, these cylinders need about 30 PSI to activate anyway. I just don't know how much force it's going to have. So even though I have these numbers written down here, it's just to illustrate the point. I'm sure I'll have to bump this one up to 40 or so, this one might go up to 50. This one I know for sure is going to be at least 90 because I've already tested it. Alright. Okay, no air leaks, so it's time to install the cylinders. All right, fingers crossed here for the second big reveal of this project. And it works. Obviously, I didn't uh, activate the main cylinder, but this is just uh, proof of concept, if you will. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, and watch this project unfold.